I think it's cool when you look through scripture, I oftentimes can read through the lens of like, these were perfect people, you know? And you read all these stories of the heroes of the faith, David being one of them, and when you actually dig into their lives, they were pretty screwed up people. And like chief of sinners, as Paul talked about, but David, I mean, there was just a list of sins he committed, but yet it still says that he was a man after God's own heart, which is super cool and an encouragement to me amidst my struggles, amidst my discouragements, those moments where I feel like I've failed, and I probably have, but thanks to the cross, there's forgiveness, and you see that, especially in the life of David. And sometimes I feel like I can relate to David, honestly, like a little more than I like to admit, not only with struggles and with just failure and fears like he had, but also just his emotions because he was this incredible psalmist. He was literally this songwriter. He like slayed giants and did all this cool stuff too that I've never done. But you read all through the Psalms and he has these like beautiful moments with the Lord where he's just worshiping the Lord. Psalm 139, he talks about just how precious to me are your thoughts, O God, how vast are the sum of them. And then like two verses later, and seemingly an instance, he's saying, slay the wicked away from me, all you who are bloodthirsty. And it's like time and time again, David is on these emotional roller coasters. And you can make a joke, like he's this songwriter guy, but I really can relate to David. And all too often, I have this battle in my heart and my mind that I'm waging war of just truth and doubt, uh, my faithlessness and God's faithfulness. But Psalm 139 verses one through four, David gives us just this really insightful take of how to present your heart and your mind to the Lord. He says, Lord, you have searched me. Lord, you know me. He says, you know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out, my lying down. You're familiar with all of my ways. And before a word is even on my tongue, Lord, you know it completely. And so for me, it's just huge to not miss that truth that he knows me, he knows you. He knows the good, the bad, the ugly. Literally before these thoughts, these words that I'm speaking now are in my mind, on my tongue, he already knows them. He knows every failure, every faithless moment, every mistake that I've made. And it's cool because it's really terrifying in one way to think he knows all those things. But when you know the finished work of the cross of Jesus, you know the hope that David had even in the Old Testament in a coming Messiah, it can also be equally freeing to know he already knows everything and he's still faithful, evil and unfaithless. And then in Psalm 139 verses seven through 10, David goes on to ask, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. And what's cool about this is the bottom line, there is nowhere we can hide, there's nowhere we can outrun the presence, the spirit, the mercy, and the love and the grace that we find in Jesus. There's literally nowhere. 2 Timothy 2.13 declares that if we are faithless, he remains faithful unto us, for he cannot deny himself. He cannot deny the finished work of the cross of Jesus. And just as the prodigal son learned in Luke 15, when he came to his senses, and he ran back to his father, the moment we turn to God, we realize we are no further from home than we've ever been. Better yet, we find he is chasing after us with his arms open wide, ready to meet us right where we are because Jesus did not die for a better, more cleaned up version of you or me. He died for the sinners that we are. Look at Romans 5, 8. God demonstrates his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ came and died for us. Not a better, more cleaned up version of you or me, but exactly how we are now. So rest in that truth today. There is no amount of faithlessness that can trump his faithfulness. He loves you just as you are because he is faithful.